Welcome to the CGMA podcast, powered by the AICPA and SEMA. This podcast is on the topic of managing responsible business. Hello. Today we'll be talking to Tanya Barman, Head of Ethics at the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, about one of the more recent challenges to face organisations today. Managing a responsible business includes addressing a number of ethical concerns, from bribery and supply chain issues to security of information and fairness of remuneration. We'll be discussing what businesses can do to operate more ethically and manage any contentious issues. Tanya, could you start off by talking us through the issue of ethics in business and how organisations can manage responsible business? Thanks, Matt. The question of ethics in business is it's, it's a challenging one. We live in an ever-connected world and with an unprecedented amount of data and information available at our fingertips. So, you know, ethics and corporate misdemeanours are now something that can stand out. Responsible business is such a large area of discussion and, and we can't possibly cover all aspects of ethics. But there certainly are a lot of ethical issues that many organisations face. Supply chains, for example, are ever more complex and global and social media has added a new element to public scrutiny that's both immediate and highly influential. These elements mean that organisations are now facing more risk than ever and they're also under unprecedented pressure to act ethically. Now, back in 2008, when the global financial crisis took hold, there was a significant increase in attention on this area. And so since then, we found through our survey that 82% of organisations now have a code of ethics. In the largest multinationals, that's over 90%, 93% in the largest corporates globally. So on the one hand, that seems great, but despite these large numbers of taking up codes of ethics, there's still problems for companies in trying to act ethically. So in the UK, for example, more people are feeling under pressure to act against their company's ethics policy or, or standards of ethical conduct. In 2012, that stood at about 18%. Today, that's 30%. So there we have to be aware of the pressures that remain within organisations. Thanks, Tanya. That's a great introduction to corporate ethics. On the face of it, it would appear that the vast majority of organisations have a code of ethics, but how does this reflect the reality of what's happening on the ground? Well, as we've just discussed, there seems to be some more pressure in certain markets, less in others. But what's happened in the externality, in the external environment, means that really as a reflection of what happened with the financial crisis and the increase of attention to these matters, regulation and legislation has increased, but so too has media attention and, and the public demand for greater transparency and public demand for better corporate ethics. This has helped create awareness of how businesses should manage responsible business and expectations um, for businesses to act responsibly. The importance of operating in an environment that promotes good practice through a mixture of processes and value-led behaviour has become the responsibility of the leadership team and the board, who will ultimately be called to account. Yet despite this, there continues to be so many high-profile cases of ethical transgressions at a global level and at a national level. You know, you could take the Rana Plaza garment factory disaster from 2013, which, which resulted in, you know, huge loss of life, you know, very immediate impact that touched everybody. And then you would look at the numerous financial services scandals that uh, have continued. And we keep hearing about these year on year, despite the financial crash, the record fines being enforced under the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act as well. So the fallout of these activities is not just a long term impact on the companies involved, you know, resulting in their fines or the fall in share price, or even the closure of the companies. There's a serious impact on the communities in which these incidents happen. But, you know, f failing with corporate ethics can also mean costing lives. So what should organisations be doing to manage their business more responsibly? OK, we've moved beyond the stage where business simply offer a product or a service. Managing a responsible business today means ensuring the route to market doesn't undermine accepted ethical norms. It's, it's having a licence to operate. So as an example, this could be understanding and managing an ethical supply chain. You need to be sure that every element of the supply chain journey that your business needs to bring its products or service to market adheres to your company's code of ethics. You know, you, you have to extend your principles and values to that of your suppliers and your partners and others that you work with. Organisations working in different territories are not only bound by their own codes and legislation in the different markets, but 
Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development Guidelines, the OECD, they have got guidelines for multinational organisations. And these requirements include human rights, environmental matters, employment conditions, industrial relations, and states will be held to account. But it's the activities of companies that will, that will come to the attention of OECD and, of course, the media. In a recent CGMA report, reputation was seen as one of the key driving factors for businesses to behave ethically. But it's an issue that should be addressed early on in business planning, providing all the staff with a clear understanding of how and why to operate. Thanks, Tanya. Through the research and feedback you get, what kind of challenges are organisations facing? Well, many of the uh, cases that I see and from my research from the reports that come up It's the dilemma between an understanding of the need to take action on specific issues and the resources, leadership and impetus internally to make these changes. So people are very aware of what needs to be done, but how they actually back up and make that happen, that's the problem. So one of the biggest problems facing an organisation, you know, today we can see is, is around security of information and data. So there's a need to safeguard an ever-growing volume of information that's been processed through an organisation and partners and down the supply chain, for example. Sort of the rise of the internet of things, cybercrime and cyber fraud. I mean, this is an area of real concern for a lot of business and being an emerging issue, you know, people are still learning how to deal with it. But there are other issues too, which can often be far more complex. You know, conflicts of interest, bribery, discrimination having to bring in place whistleblowing guidance to be able to see what is going on within your business and your fundamental safety and security in the workplace. They require a lot of sensitivity and they need rigorous processes, not just a tick box approach. Anti-corruption and human rights are two of the main ethical issues that continue to rise in prominence. And, you know, there's an increasing awareness, particularly around anti-corruption, with the introduction of the UK Bribery Act and record-breaking fines coming from FCPA, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act of the US. The World Economic Forum, for example, really illustrate the scale of this. Corruption could add up to 10% of the total cost of doing business globally and 25% of the cost of procurements in the emerging economies and developing nations. What we have seen is that the growth of awareness of human rights has risen over the past 20 years. So from our survey, we can see how far that our members and students globally can see that it's pertinent to their business. But actually awareness of how you address these issues and the guiding principles is still very low. Human rights is covering issues such as child labour, dangerous work environments, land clearance, where there can be high, high human costs. And if a company is found to be transgressing, you know, high corporate costs as well. You know, look at FIFA and, and the Qatar World Cup. They've been plagued both by bribery but also human rights issues in Qatar. So these are going to become more and more newsworthy and the public really want to see changes in business on this account. Thanks, Tanya. That's been really informative. Thanks for talking to us and and thanks to everyone for tuning in. I'm Matt Hurst with Tanya Barman for SEMA. See you all next time. For more information on our work on managing responsible business, please visit our web address, cgma.org.